<laughs> yeah, it's not racially sensitive or anything. We recording? <laughs> not anymore. Stop that. I take that back. It's off. Is it? No. <laughs> okay, now it's gone. I don't think it's off. <laughs> we never what, your pants? Pants are never on. <laughs> always optional in the butthole. Wait, the butthole's always an option. Welcome to the official Butthole, butthole Podcast. Podcast. Bringing, bringing you, you movies, movies video, video games, games and, and randomness, randomness in between. between. Star, stop talking over my bit, damn it! Scott, the great Brandino, Gage's Rage, and Star Don Lamont. Lamont. Oh, yeah. What's up, girl? You can talk over that one. What's up, girl? That's you. Nobody I worked hard to record that. You ever tried, Star? Do you know stop, how many times you were being that? hard? <laughs> how many times? I can't stop being hard. I'm a one-take warrior. It only took one shot. Ronnie did. One shot, one killed. Ronnie. <laughs> Do you Is think that... anyone even gets that reference? No, I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah, because you're a noob of... Uh, and you? Reality TV. Yeah. I watch plenty of reality TV. Not the challenge, enough. Floor Bama Shore. Not a, yeah, that's where a, that came from, baby. We've talked about Floor Bama Shore three weeks in a row. I know. Different uh, podcast, but. Oh, man. Yeah, and weird enough, our listeners are going down. Yeah. And welcome to episode the, 214. Hey, fuck you. Brought to you by the Blue Collar Media Group, which we will be covering the draft for this year. And I know this is a movie review, but God damn it, I'm excited to cover the draft. You didn't say it, but what you just read off in our live broadcast there, though it's all breaking news. No one knew that we were doing any of that for the giveaways. No shit. Dead ass. You broke news last podcast. I didn't dead, know. Dead we ass. didn't have a. <laughs> Are you watching Floribama Shore? I did You're go, back on the train. Dude, no, dude, dead I ass did go has in been around long before. That's dead ass. Yeah. <laughs> They said head ass. He is a, there, there's a couple head asses on that fucking show. So you know Yoster. the the blue collar media group logo. Pretty obvious that it's a a blue collar. Uh, yeah, I've been looking at it for three mustache. weeks. Mustache, mustache. Thought it was a mustache. One million percent thought mustache until you just said that. Yeah, a lot of people actually have said that it. Lo- it kind of looks like Gage's mustache or like Wolverine's hair. <laughs> yep, going onto his head. Yep, a little uh, bit reaching around like spreading butt cheeks or yeah. Wolverine sideburns coming down to his chin. Could be. Joe Mauer like sideburns. Butt, butt chin. Jamar wishes he had sideburns like that. Jamar? Jamar. 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 Yes, Blue Collar is our sponsor of this episode, the next episode, the one before this. And the, the one, one after. after this. But Hopefully. after that, we're going to renegotiate. <laughs> yeah, all right. They, they they didn't hear the butt cheek comment yet, so we might still have the next one. We'll, we'll come back to you next week and let you know where we're sitting. And if you're going to drop us our email like our last person did, just fucking know that we don't check our emails. <laughs> Hit us up on Facebook. I don't check that one. Gage doesn't even have notifications on his phone. He, Nothing. We were talking, what was it, like two weeks ago. I texted him, and he never responded back. And he's like, dude, I didn't see your text. He's like, you somehow put no, uh, snooze notifications on my phone for your, your conversation. I was like, there's no fucking That's a way good I bit. can do that. That's a good bit. He believed Dude, it. I did it myself. I know. That's a good bit, though. He didn't realize he did it. it. It was like, because I just switched to the iPhone, so I'm goofing around. And then, uh, like, when you texted me, Scott, your profile changed. Like, uh, it went from... You know, Scott NDSU to Scott Melgren, so now I have to remember your last name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No last name drops here. <laughs> Wait. is my, Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not Melgenasium? That's Melgenasium. Melgenasium. That's what my phone thinks it is. is sorry. Is my name still Dick Bird? Uh, yes, but I had to edit it. God. So you're Dick Bird Stein. Nice. No last names. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. Stein Nuremberger. <laughs> <laughs> Stand in the burger. <laughs> but it does say you are my daughter, so that's right. Well, oh, you geez. are my daddy. <laughs> you guys didn't share a college dorm together. Like, you don't. You don't understand how cold it gets so in, in a Fargo dorm. It's All right, so I'm gonna play the joke in right here. Yeah, let's do this joke. So then, if he's your daddy, is that mean he's giving you the whole twelve inches, three inches at a time? <laughs> what does that mean? I have to give him to him seven times. That's a no good math, but uh, no, he was he's never much of a giver. Oh, yeah, he's selfish as fuck. He was a selfish dad. This motherfucker, Gage's Rage over here, I just heard him say before we crack the mics here for this episode that he wants to be apologized to. <laughs> so, I'm very selfish. There you go, right there. 
Anybody that demands to be apologized to, they got issues. I didn't demand shit. And he I'm never... perfectly fine acting like nothing happened, but I demand an apology <laughs> if you want to talk about it, damn it. <laughs> All right, let's get into the damn movie Let's get review. into your damn joke first. I that just was did. a joke. Oh, it just what? didn't land. The whole 12 inches, three inches at a time. Oh. It's like a snack-sized sandwich. It's three inches this morning, three in the afternoon, three later, and then three later before I go to bed. <laughs> Right over my head. 12 inches. <laughs> yeah, I was like, three ti- three three at a time. Does that mean I still have to give it to him six times? Four. Three? Never mind. It's a really long button bar. Whatever, we'll roll with it. Totally hit, too. <laughs> so the movie this week was Warrior. That button bar really fucking slaps. 2011, starring Joel Edgerton, Tom Stars Hardy, Pitt, right? Nick Nolte. And the girl from Once Upon a Time. She's also in, in How I Met Your Mother. That's how I recognize her. She's the her. captain's wife. Yep. Right? Ted's yes. uh, future girlfriend, future ex-girlfriend. Not his wife past, by the end of the show. Past girlfriend. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, Terrible so, ending to a show, by the way. It was well, bad. Let's talk about that for a second. No. You okay, did, you stop. Liked it? Spoiler alert. So oh, people you, have not seen How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, some people haven't seen Warrior show, either, and we're about to ruin you everything. Haven't finished but they, it? Sh- they signed up for that shit. They know last week we're doing Warrior. They didn't know we were doing How I Met Your Mother. You haven't finished How I Met I've, Your Mother. I own this fucking series. Of course, I finished it. Then who who are we spoiling it for? Just hey, the listeners. Hey, all right, guys. If you haven't seen How I Met Your Mother, go watch it. You idiot. Pause it right now. Go watch it. Come back Skip in three weeks. Skip the last weeks. season. Nah, you can do it in a few days. You can't rip through eight seasons in a few days. Well, it not depends. when you're not when you're working. <laughs> oh, rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go so ahead. The, Tell the them ends. <laughs> the entire thing the whole story was is how, how I met, met your, your mother. mother. But that's not really the point of the story. It's, All right, kids, sit it's down. why I'm in love with Robin, and uh, that's the exact also point known of it. as the ghost wife on Safe Haven. Is she? Yep. And she was in Agents of Shield. She's in yeah. She's the Marvel, Marvel series. Universe. Yep. Yeah. That stuff. So the, they, the last season, right, is when they finally bring in the mother. Yeah. And, and the interactions with everybody and how they've had it with her leading up to how she meets Ted. Yeah. And then, so you get one season of Ted and her, and then you learn that, you know, she got sick and she passed away. And that's the whole reason they're having this conversation. And they said, that was a really long story. The only thing we took from it is you love Aunt Robin. Because there's fucking seven seasons talking about how he loves Aunt Robin. Why is it called How I Met Your Mother if they're just going to pull it in for a tiny little bit? Well, and then don't even have the mother as like a real character. She didn't even really have a main role in the final season when she was brought on. It was all like these mini interactions that the um, Jason Segal and Marshall, Marshall and, Lily. And, and Lily and Barney. When's the last time you've seen the show? It's been a long time. The show's been off the air for like six years, so that's why I'm not afraid to give a spoiler on it. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Barney ends up with Robin, and that's how it's supposed to be. Right? But it it doesn't get there. But Barney's relationship with Robin became the focus in the last few seasons. They got married, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they got divorced. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just like you thought that it was all going to come full circle and everything was going to relate to How I Met Your Mother. The first seven seasons of it had nothing to do with he, it. Okay, you want to go real spoiler with it? He should have ended up with the baker. The baker was the best one out of all of them. I liked the doctor. Uh, that was with uh, Barney, though, wasn't no, it? No, the, the, the tattoo girl that was taking his tattoo off. She was in Scrubs. Yeah, Elliot Reed. Yeah. Oh, Scrubs. Stella. 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 Stella's Stella. good. Yeah, but Stella broke his heart. Like, what a shitty move. Yeah, she was a bitch. She left on the boat with her ex. Like, The baker wasn't bad. The baker should have been his mother. They, right. The baker and him got along really well. Yeah. Stay the tuned was the one. to our blog. We're going to have the top five girls Barry should have ended up with. <laughs> Stage is going to write That's it. A good one. That's new content coming out. As well as the top ten real football movies of all time. Oh, yeah. So let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, the pause. Beef. Yes. let's pause on the, the movie and review for a second because I have I'm a bit of take a leak. I didn't even realize that we got to ask this as far as a bigger group making a bigger list. And so when the Blue Collar Media Group released the official top 10 movie football list, 
I was like, all right, it's not mine, and I got to appreciate other people's opinions. A uh, couple problems right off the bat was longest yard, top five. Um, really showed the age of the children That's that true. they asked. That's true. I'm thinking. And I, as well, the same, same the thing. Children. Save the children. They, might, they must have asked a bunch of kids, like, what's your favorite football movie? Yep. And That's they the said, only one they could think oh, of. the longest yard. It's, you know, the second best Adam Sandler football movie in it. The fact that it was over the water, boys. I think they, they pulled their nieces and nephews at Easter. I think it must list. <laughs> and then Varsity Blues not making the list at all. Was Some another of them hadn't even seen it. Another thing that kind of showed, like, what, what are we dealing with here? No whipped cream bikinis? What the fuck? Like, yeah, we're not going to ask what the, the fuck b- are you into? You're not going to ask this panel of butthole what their favorite tampons are. Yeah. My biggest problem. Playtex. Of the entire <laughs> list. Was Brandon liking Playtex tampons? Second, I second that. No. They were good for bloody noses. Yeah. Big ass nose, head ass. <laughs> God damn, it's lit today. Fuck, that snapped. That was popping. If you're about to shit your pants, plug one of them up your butt, you're golden. Don't gotta, mind me just watching. You got to hope it's a cramp. <laughs> Biggest problem with the list was draft day making it at all. At all. <laughs> At all. The Just, fact that draft day was in someone's top 25 football movies. Is bullshit. Is bullshit. But it made the top 10 list. And at, at what? How, like 20 points? So Oh, yeah. People had it high. Well, Someone yeah. must have. It, out of respect for this individual and his, what, anonymity? Is that the best way to put yeah. it? Yeah. So people don't know who he is and he's going to get hate him. mail. Last he thing. had draft day. It's like it was arguably my top two. Top two. Has the he ever watched, creator of the list ever, had that? No, I'm no, sorry. Watched, the guys who voted on okay. the draft. I know you want to keep this anonymous, but I don't think we should. That that should no, not be protected. no. We can't. We can't bring all of our millions of fans against this one person. Yeah, we don't fair. need mob. Fucking. This we don't mob need this. Mob. He wouldn't yeah. be able to safely I, go to work. Okay. I fair. I can't let people attack Steve like that. <laughs> so, Steve, I thought everybody. No, the record general. Ro- the record general. holder, Steve. It, no it way. Wasn't, it wasn't Steve. He said draft day should not have made the top ten. Fair. It, okay. So and this is my You're my protected, piece with it. You got them giving up three first round picks to move from I believe is seven to one. Right, that's realistic. They moved all the way up there because there's a can't miss quarterback, best quarterback since Andrew Luck to enter the draft, make a splash. They told him to make a splash. He moves up to one. Right. He gets this linebacker who, if he doesn't get picked by the Browns at seven, is dropping down to the 20s, and he knows it, so he's desperate. He calls him. He's like, what the fuck's up, coach? You made a bad move. Watch the tape. Watch the tape of that game. I had four sacks on that quarterback. Whatever. You had four sacks. You had a good game. You're looking at going seven or in the 20s because there's no need for a linebacker. They just spent three first-round picks to move up to one overall. Then draft day comes, or they, they figure out that the quarterback has – Potential character concerns because nobody went to his birthday party. That's it. Solid player on the field can fucking throw the football and win games, but no one showed up to his birthday party. So maybe his teammates aren't a fan of him. Who the fuck cares? He's the best quarterback since Andrew Luck to enter the draft. You moved up to one. So they take. Do I have character concerns? The linebacker. This you is have the what? Draft day movie do and I review. Have, do I have character concerns? Who'd you invite to your birthday party? Nobody. Exactly. Nobody. Get fucked. You have character concerns. <laughs> they take the linebacker. Nobody at one? At to one. A middle linebacker, too. Not a pass rusher. Middle linebacker. Just want to be apologized. I, I don't to know him. the entire history of the draft, but I'm pretty sure no middle linebacker. Ray Lewis in his prime wasn't worth three first round And picks. their number one overall pick? Yeah. In his prime, he's not even worth that. I'm just going to say something very controversial. Draft day is not a very good movie. But oh, wait, there's more. Ding, ding, ding. It's not controversial. At it's six, super mediocre. The quarterback is falling down, right? People are like, why didn't they take him? There must be something wrong with him. Mm-hmm. He's falling. The Seattle Seahawks was who they traded with in the first place. So six, Jacksonville Jaguars are sitting there. Browns don't have any more firsts, but they want to jump back up because they see this quarterback falling. So they give up three seconds to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not a realistic trade to move up to six overall pick. At all. No, not even close. Not realistic. But wait. There's more. Once they acquire the pick, Seattle Seahawks, who had the number one over pick in the first place, said, oh, we want that quarterback. Now we want him. We'll give you all your future first-round picks back for six. Why didn't they offer that to Jacksonville? Who the fuck knows? Or just two of them? 
and keep one. Yeah, because that was much better than uh or better yet. Why the seconds? fuck would they have in traded him in the first place if, if they, they wanted, wanted him that bad? Yeah. So they get all their draft picks back to move back one spot into their original seven. So they got the first pick for free, and they drafted uh, Aaron Foster. Well, the first pick would have costed the three seconds, but still, technically, yeah, not free. But still, still, the most unrealistic shit in the world. He deserves to be fired. He doesn't deserve to be dating Jennifer Garner. That's, and it should not be. That's fair. I think most of the hatred towards movie this time. movie is because he's dating Jennifer Garner. And I'm you're not, not even that high on Jennifer Garner, if okay. I'm being honest. But that's fair. The, the how big of a asshole he is in there. Yeah, that's true. He, he's just fucking with the team. And the coach is all pissed off. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a mock of uh, the Vegas coach. Gruden. Gruden. I'm pretty Chucky. sure he's supposed to be Gruden is who he's playing. It's, a, it's like, oh, he took over a team that was good and won a Super Bowl and then didn't pan out and blah, blah, blah. And he's all hyper and he's pissed because he's trading all these things and he's just an asshole to his coach. You got to work with the coach as the GM. You don't go in there and be like, this is my team. You coach the team I give you. No, he wanted that running back at seven to begin with. Made him happy in the end. Unrealistic. Stupid movie. Fuck you, whoever voted for it. But it had Kevin Costner in it. Yeah, playing an idiot. I, okay, yeah. so just so I'm aware, Disneyfication of draft and basketball, not okay, but Disneyfication of just football team is okay? Yeah. Okay. It's very confusing landmines that are out there, you know? No, it's like, like the it's NFL minesweeper, or... So. Football, football is okay, but once it goes into the draft, high, not okay. High school football. Because Star knows is about okay. that. Yeah, oh, they're high school, high school sports. Because that was college too. College basketball, no go. It just wasn't as good of a movie in general. Oh, okay. plus the whole Jennifer Garner thing. That that's fair. I'm not a fan of drafting. I, I think a football movie for a top ten should have football, right? And there's not a lot. Of, I get there's behind the scenes stuff and like. Part of a good football movie is the inspirational story of them playing the game. No, no. Part of every good football movie is the inspirational uh, compilation of the season where they excel. Run through to get to the championship. Yeah, yeah. The highlight. You know, every good movie has that fucking five seconds. Bang, bang, bang. We just call that the gauge's rage. Yes, sir. The five seconds of fame. (laughs) I need to calm down a little bit. Yeah, you're fired up. My heart rate's going. Uh, well, Varsity Blues didn't even make the list, and that's then just the cocaine I, star. If I want to get star really going, the Express didn't even make the list. No, either. that doesn't get me going because I understand that people might not have seen that movie, <laughs> and that might not be everyone's cup of tea. And <laughs> but, I understand you wouldn't have it in your top ten if you've never seen it. Yeah, I'm. I bet most of them haven't seen it. But to put draft day in it, maybe they've only seen ten football movies. Maybe the person had had two has only seen two football movies. Maybe they've only seen eight. If draft day makes it, <laughs> like, I'm, in my that's view, technically about football. Six. Draft day got twenty five points. I don't know how the point system quite worked out. I, I don't know what the value was, but it got twenty five points. Remember the Titans, which came after that was uh, number four. It was after the longest yard. Um, that one got eighty nine. Remember the Titans was one. I know, but I just wanted to get you going. <laughs> it's the only this thing as well just right. be the not movie in review. All right, movie and, and review. And then we'll do the movie and review right. next. Amazon Prime. <laughs> the reason you're Bane all before here. before his mask. Hulu. Is it on Amazon Prime too? I it watched was it on Hulu. Hulu. It was on Hulu? Yeah. I think I watched Brandon it on watch Prime. a different fucking Brandon Warrior movie. It. We watched the 2019 edition, right? <laughs> you do yeah. stuff. You yeah, already right? brought up Sparta. I know you watched the right movie. This is Sparta. Okay. All right. Great movie. By the way, are you going to get into your review Sparta right now? It's a five million dollar tournament where amateur MMA, not players, even amateurs, is it? Or uh, anyone no. can enter? Yeah, sure. It, everyone's not amateur, but yeah, it's yeah. Because Kobo was like the best one ever. It's just an open challenge. Yes, yeah. and but it's a tournament style, so it's not like normal fights. There's one fight every like six months. Single elim. So this is a, a tournament style to find out who the best fighter. It's middleweight. They all kind of are different sizes, so I don't know how the weight limits went, but Colbert was quite a bit bigger than everyone. Yes. But that's towards the end of the movie. The movie starts. It's this guy coming home, sitting on his dad's stoop. Don't really know their relationship yet, 
Turns out it's his son that he hasn't seen in 14 years. He used to be an abusive alcoholic father. He beat his mom. He left with his mom. Older brother stayed with his dad because he had a girlfriend that he was serious with. And his first Didn't boy's name is Tommy. Yeah, he's the younger brother is Tommy. Older brother is Brendan. Yes. Or Brendan. 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 Um, Close to an okay name. Dad has been sober for a thousand days. Starting to turn his life around. Has really no relationship with either of the sons. He hasn't seen the one in 14 years. Talked to him. The other one is on a call only. Not allowed to go see the kids. They haven't seen the daughters for about three, in three years. years. Yeah. yeah. Didn't even meet the one yet. So basically since he's been sober. He's trying to make sure he's on the right track. The other brother, older brother, lives in Philadelphia with his wife, two kids. He's a teacher. Both of them had a fighting past growing up in wrestling and stuff like that. Um, Tommy, who is the younger one who just showed up out of nowhere, goes to a gym where a prominent UFC fighter is training. He knocks a guy out. Guy's calling, says $900. I need a, a sparring partner or 200, 200 bucks, 200. 200 bucks. I need a sparring partner. And he walks up. And it's, it's Tom Hardy, so you can't understand most words he says in anything that he's in. My beef no. with this movie, before we get going, is my TV upstairs is shit. Like, the volume sucks. I've told you guys before. Six will, you can't hear things. Seven will blast you through the wall. At certain times, to hear Tom Hardy, I had to have it up to 35. Wait, are you talking to your new TV? The one in my in my bedroom. Oh, okay. So it was like cheap shit-ass TV. Okay. So I had to hold the remote in my hand and manually <laughs> click it up every time Tom Hardy was about to talk. And then turn it down every, right after for the fight scenes. Yeah, because I couldn't hear out. anything. But yeah. go on. So he gets in the ring. Do you remember that guy's name? He had like a mad mad dog. <sighs> yeah, mad dog. Mad dog. It. Yep. Uh, gets in the ring with him. People think he's just going to get his shit beat out of him. Mad Dog was talking shit, too. Goes exactly opposite. Tom Hardy beats the shit out of Mad Dog. Walks out of the ring. Set, tells the guy he owes him 200 bucks. Goes home. <laughs> basically Badass. tells his dad that he wants to fight. He's back he wants to it. train again. And his dad's all excited and finds this but thing in the basement. They're just having a relationship with each It's just... Strictly trainer, training. trainer and trainee. Yeah. It's We're not, not father going son. Back to father son. And so Tommy was also uh, a high school wrestling god. Essentially, yeah. he, they, the prodigy was his nickname. There was the um, like Roman guy. I don't know if he was a real guy, but like Thegenus or something. Athenius. They, yeah, something like that. Who had won fourteen hundred and fifteen matches in a row, never lost. And Tom Hardy was. Kind of that—that that was the goal was to get to that point, and he hadn't lost, so he was an ultimate fighter. This is young too, yeah. not even like old high school. This is like thirteen years old, <clears throat> and that's when he left when he was that young. So they didn't get a chance to go through his whole career, and it, they never really talk about whether he stayed in wrestling when he left with his mom or anything like that. They do talk about what happens with the mom and stuff mm. later in the movie. Yeah, that first morning though. Uh, the dad goes up to Tommy's room and tries to wake him up, and he, he found the poster of, like, a goal marker for those 1,415 wins. Um, and he's like, did you keep wrestling when you when you moved back out with your mom? Or, you know, fill me in, tell me something. And he's like, no, I can make, wake myself up. Make my own coffee, <laughs> put that in no. the basement. Yep. So that Get was out of just here. going back to we're not having a relationship. You're my trainer. Yep. And so the the older brother is a teacher, and they're struggling with money, yeah. payments on stuff. Their house. They're going to lose their house to the bank. Um, wife might work at a strip club or just a bar. I'm not sure which one it is. She has a night job. She wears very short skirts, too. And he goes to the bank to try and get, like, remortgage or get a loan or for something and is denied. Mm-hmm. And so he says he's getting a second job as a bouncer, but instead of doing the bouncer, he actually goes to do cash fights. And is that worth nine hundred dollars? Why do I have nine hundred dollars in my head for some reason? He won five hundred. He won five hundred. Yeah. So he goes, does these underground fights. That was at a strip club parking lot. <laughs> Maybe that's why I thought she worked at a strip club. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was in the parking lot of a strip club. Yeah, and one of his students' older brother was at the fight. And told them, and so word got around to all the kids that their chemistry teacher is a badass that was fighting at a strip club parking lot, beating people's asses. 
He's got a pretty wicked and shiner, too. Mind you, fight. Tommy is the type, the younger brother is the one who can just go in, kick the shit out of somebody. They're not even going to touch you. Yeah. Brendan's Brendan, the technician. Yep, and he's going to take some hits. Mm-mm. So, yeah, he definitely had a shiner going into school, and then they had a conversation with, like, the superintendent and the principal, and he's like, you can't be doing this. You're going to go on suspended without pay. For the next semester. Yep. Come back after that. Return to school. And, we'll, we'll talk about it after that. They said, "Yeah, it was go to the school board." Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, I'm suspended without pay for the next six months. What am I going to do? I can't pay my bills the way it is <laughs> with this job. So he tells his wife he's going to get back into fighting. He can make, you know, she's like five hundred bucks at a time. He's like, "Well, I can make There's way more shows. doing different ones in different places." So she reluctantly. Except kind of says okay, but more so just doesn't say no. And this is where you hear the first time about his history as a fighter, because the last time he did fight, he ended up in the hospital. Yep. So that's Unconscious that's why for, they made the decision to cut fighting to out. Fighter. So he meets up with his buddy, yeah, his buddy, a trainer owns a gym. buddy. Yep, who ha- is training a, a really well known fighter who's part of the Sparta tournament that we were talking about. That's the big dog you're talking about, right? No, no, it wasn't. It, it wasn't, wasn't Mad Dog. No, no, but that uh, the big Koba? Koba. No, Koba's no. from overseas. He's oh. from like Russia. Yeah, he's undefeated. He's never lost a fight. Gotcha. Sorry. So he starts training with this guy who's already training someone for Sparta, just because he wants to do all these other fights. Uh, Tom Hardy, because it's the new age and everyone has cell phones, a video leaked of him beating the fuck out of Mad Dog online, and he kind of became internet famous. For that fight, because it's, it's, it would be like someone going and sparring McGregor and beating the hell out of him, some no name. And so he kind of gets a little notoriety from that and gets an invitation to the Sparta Challenge through that video. They say, we want to see what this guy can do. Let's give him a slot there. Um, the younger or older brother, Brendan, who also hasn't seen Tommy in 14 years, no mm-hmm. relationship, uh, Lucks his way into the tournament by the guy who was getting trained, like fucked up his knee on a run. They or something. never showed what happened, but yeah, he was he just holding his leg, and the trainer was like, "Oh fuck! Like, what are we gonna do?" And he said, "Give me a shot." And he's like, "No, like, this is not for you." And he's like, "Just give me the shot. Like, you would know the connections. Give me that his spot in Sparta." So they both do it. I'm sure I skipped some stuff, but Brandon said he didn't even like the first half of the movie because it was slow. It was really slow. I, said, I don't but think so. I, I didn't think it was that bad. I was into the whole thing. I, I mean, I was into it. I watched the whole thing last night. I stayed yeah. up late to watch it. And, yeah, I mean, the first half, it just it doesn't move quick like the second half. Yeah, once you get it, into the once, fight. Yeah, once you compare it to the second half, it's not as quick. Yeah. But you, it still keeps your interest. It's not like and, a slow yeah. beginning. And you definitely have to learn the background of these characters and yeah. why they're feeling this way. And they did a good job at that, but. Yeah, it's not like you're just slapped into 14 years uh, Marine. Maybe it seems veteran. slower and longer because I had to adjust the volume every two seconds. While your sleeping pregnant wife was right next to you. Oh, yeah, but she was snoring <laughs> like she was way out. So one important note an apology that coming? I missed. <laughs> I demanded an apology. While he becomes internet famous. Was that, um, well, I was just going to say, he's his last name, he took his mother's last name. Tommy so did. the two brothers have different last names. One's Reamer or something like that. Yeah, it's more like Ritalin. Some close to they, that. They have two different last names. Uh, someone in, in the military sees the video of Tommy knocking him out and runs to find another video of him being rescued out of a tank. Apparently ripped the door off a tank while it was starting to sink and saved this guy's life. Yeah, and then disappeared. And he's like, holy shit, that's the same person. And so you start to know, okay, he was in the army because you didn't really know anything about Tommy's past. He was there. He's a Marine. He was a Marine, blah, 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 all this. So they see each other at the fight and they do have a little bit of talk. Doesn't go well. It's not like, oh, I missed you or anything like that. It's like, a lot fuck of fuck you years. for staying. You yeah, know. he was pissed that he didn't leave with the mom, but he said, like, I, that girl's my wife now and, like, it wasn't just some daughters. girl. Yeah, it wasn't just some girl. And like you learn that the mom died. And he's like, I didn't even get to say goodbye to mom. Like, you you kept that information from me forever, and fuck you for that. And lots of fuck yous back and forth between them. Really uh, love lost, it seems like. In a weird spot and in a, Las Vegas, just like behind casinos, 
It's just a weird yeah. spot, it seemed like. Like, nobody was there, but they were on the strip. And Brendan is also pissed. He brings up some animosity from their childhood because he was the golden child, and the dad loved him and always trained him. And his dad didn't care about the underdog. <clears throat> yeah, he took that out on his dad, though, not yeah. necessarily Tommy. But he he was saying like you you I stayed with dad because you had dad for thirteen years. I didn't even have dad. Mm-hmm. You had dad the whole time, so that's why I stayed with dad when you left with mom. So they both go in as the biggest underdogs into this tournament. Sixteen. Fighter tournament. The announcers are not talking them up at all, thinking they're going to get their ass kicks. I think Tommy goes first. He does. And Tommy, he, that's, it's not too hard for him. <laughs> it, it, okay, his stance was just, looked awful. Trash. Like hunched over. I don't know. It was it just, like a brawler. It, yeah. It, it like he a looked, bar fight. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but he like walks up. He doesn't stance. do any interviews. He doesn't talk to the yeah. media. He <clears throat> walks up with no song. Walks into the match, beats the fuck out of people, and walks out. Doesn't get crowned <laughs> winger. He's so badass. He's ultimate badass. He's so badass in this movie. So he goes, and then they're like, "Holy shit!" Like that was he did good. Like maybe this guy does have something. Then Brendan goes in, and they don't know that they're related at all at this point. In time. Yeah, different last names. Yeah, the media doesn't. Yep. Yeah. And the he struggles through, but gets the win. He definitely gets his ass kicked in like every single fight, but he's really good at the arm bars and the leg bars and getting on top shit. and protecting himself when the he's getting his ass kicked. Yeah, it's a technician. So he wins, and they're like, "Oh, well, they both made it to the second round, but we don't anticipate them going much further than this." News breaks of the army thing. On TV, and they're like, oh, this Tommy guy is actually a hero. He saved these people, and then he becomes a fan favorite with all these military people who weren't there before, but somehow got tickets in the time <laughs> learning that he was a hero and had to go support their Marine brother. So they start showing up. He's a huge fan section. The teacher does not have a huge fan section there, but back at home in Philadelphia, he has like the whole town rallying around him. All his students were upset that he's not their teacher anymore. They're, like, watching it at a drive-in theater type thing as the whole town. Even the principal who fired him is, like, rooting for him. Rooting him on. And oh, yeah. Really into it. Uh, I think the second fight for Tommy was the fastest knockout they'd ever seen. Was that on Mad Dog? No. Was it Mad Dog? Mad Dog was the fastest the one they ever seen. One? Because Mad Dog was talking shit, like, he's not getting a second chance of this. It was a fluke. And then Mad Dog just gets obliterated in five seconds. Jeez. Yeah, like dodged one punched and then a knockout punched, and he hit, his head hits the mat and he just turns around and walks away. He knows he's not getting up. He knows he's knocked out. Just really cool when you watch it. That was the first one. That no, it wasn't the first one because I remembered it as the first one, and when I watched it again, I was like, oh, the first one was fast, but it was later that he had like the, the five second knockout. Okay, and when we can check after this, you want, you had that face like, oh, you're you're wrong. I'm right. But bet, 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 bet. I'm not that confident. You just watched it last night. What I know, but it was late, oh. dude. That part, he was turning up and turning down the volume on his TV. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking for the volume. Tom Hardy button. whispered something, so you had to. What what did he say? Yeah, no, because he didn't. He didn't even fight Mad Dog until the second night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mad Dog was the second fight, but I second believe, night. Well, second fight too. He fought the first guy, and I'm pretty sure the first guy he knocked out. Right away. And then bet, 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 bet. Because they're like, he's not even to stay here and check this out. And then he fought Mad yeah, Dog. But the and... fastest knockout they seen was not the first guy. No. But yeah. the first so guy is where he knocked him out and, left. and then left. So, Wait. man, we might be talking about two different things right now. We might both be right. We'll see if you are. Yeah, All right, I'm now jerk each other I off. I wasn't talking about, right now, do it. about his reaction. First. I was talking about the fastest knockout. I think that was Mad Dog, though. I think the fastest yeah, knockout So that was wasn't Dog. the first guy. No, oh my God, that's what it. I was saying. No, he's doing it. Oh. Sick. Pants are optional <laughs> at the butthole. Oh, yeah. <sighs> okay. That was, that was me when Tom Hardy came on the screen. So it goes. He's a hall pass, too. Uh, <laughs> I, I think at one point in time, Tommy told his dad to fuck off during... <laughs> They were in the casino. Yeah. And the dad came to kind of talk to him and starting to get more like relationship type deal. He said, I liked you better when you were drunk, threw his change at him, 
then the dad went upstairs and the dad got hammered for the first time and yeah. was having a meltdown. Had a relapse and was getting super drunk. He had his headphones on. Tommy get back to the room. He's like scream crying and Tommy like puts him in a bed and coddles him like he's a child, like pets his head and stuff like that. Uh, goes to the second night. I think that's when he beats Mad Dog. And the fight that I wanted was Koba versus Tommy. I think that's what the fans deserved would have been Koba versus Tommy. But instead, Brendan drew that card. Very mismatched in size. Everyone thinks he's going to get his ass kicked, which he technically does. Like, two rounds especially. He won, at one point picked him up and like threw his limp body against the, the fence, the, the cage. cage. Yeah. Hard it, to watch. Yeah, it was... He's, getting the shit beat out of him and his trainer in between the second and third round said you have to knock him out or you lost this fight like you doesn't matter how good you do in this round if you don't knock him out you You lose and not only that but you lose your house like you guys are on the streets if you don't win this fight you lose everything yeah and so he does much better starts you know playing a little offense rather than getting the shit beat out of him and he eventually gets him into a leg lock of some sort, some knee thing. I don't know MMA that well. But the, my favorite part about that was the trainer going, break his leg, break his leg, just yelling at it. Because when they do that in, like, Cobra Kai or the Karate Kid, it's always the bad guy that's saying it. But this was the good guy trainer going, <laughs> break his leg, well, break his leg. Karate he's got it. and MMA are two different things. I just thought it was so bad. Because he was trying, he knew that, you know, he can get out of this. You got to try your hardest to break his leg so he'll yeah. tap. Like, if he doesn't tap, he's got a broken leg. You're not like, with the intention of breaking his leg, yeah. he's not in the intention of breaking so or, he t- or tapping. He taps Koba. He's on to the championship against Tommy. Uh, more breaking news Rooms. comes out. Nope, not yet. I'm sorry. Um, Tommy is AWOL from the Marines because of a friendly fire situation where his whole platoon was murdered, including his best friend, in friendly fire, and he just left. And that's what he was doing when he saved the people, was he was trying to get out of there and leave. And so the military police are there to arrest him after the final. They're going to take him away. I don't know what would come of that. I don't know how the military police works, but it seems kind of fucked up. They let him finish the fight before taking him? Yeah. Because then he said that if he wins the $5 million, it's going to go to the wife and family of his best friend. Who he considered his brother more than his actual brother. And through this information, everyone starts to put together that his real name is not what he's going by. It's Conlon. It's Conlon. And these guys are brothers. Two people who didn't, they didn't think would make out a first round or fight each other in championship. Are actually brothers. Chills thinking about it. There's a moment in the movie where I got chills. And uh, they go in. The wife shows up for Brendan. And the dad's missing for Tommy. She says, what are you going to do? He's like, I'm going to fight him. It's the only thing I can do. I got to fight him. Uh, goes on. Long fight. Um, Tommy has the most issues with him. Well, the most unrealistic part of the movie is Tommy would have kicked his ass. I think. And, you know, I don't think he was holding back or letting him win, but I think with how he handled everyone up, up to that point. And, and he doesn't knock him out in 10 seconds. That Brendan got beat out of him and how tired he had to been and everything like that. I don't understand how he didn't go in there and fuck him up too. You're really breezing over um, our boy, the subst- or the teacher. He was the reason he was so confident in those bar fights, the strip club parking lot brawls, was because he said these guys are not fighters. These guys are guys that have seen too much UFC, you know. And when you're talking about Tommy, he did have that same style. He wasn't like a, a he was trained in wrestling, and he did have a background just like he, his brother, but he didn't have a true trained fighter's technique. That quote was word for word too. Nice job, bud. He still would have kicked his ass. Based off of my eye test on what Tommy did in the ring. It was disney for you. And he would have. This wasn't him. a Disney movie. He would have, like, one of the punches, because he was getting hit. How come everyone else got knocked out by that hit, but he can take it? Yeah, the 50 older brother, disney us just fine, bro. 
Yeah, Disneyfying is an open term for not just Disney movies. Not only that, but Tommy was taking late shots on Brendan, too. Yeah, at the end of the the first round, round, he got a late shot on him. Um, He he looked unhealthy during that fight. He always kind of did. Yeah, but he he looked like a a dog with rabies. He did. He was probably was on a the pill ghost withdrawal. of his past coming back, yeah. man. No, uh, his when his dad started yeah, his training dad him, his, his dad took three bottles of pills. Yep, but and also he was withdrawing. You think possible? He would I have mean, been withdrawing the whole fucking fight. Dude though. looked like Doc Holiday. I'm telling you he right did. now. It yeah, it was reminded his, me of it. It was his guilt in his past coming it back and could be resurfacing. Mixture of things. Yeah. So no. First round Apologize. went to Tommy. I'm not apologizing. <laughs> Tommy was crazy. Uh, second round was a little more even, and then he got to the end of the second round, and mm. Brendan had him in an arm bar, and he wasn't tapping at all, and he actually, I think, popped his shoulder out, was it? Yeah, like yeah. dislocated it. Dislocated his shoulder, so Tommy didn't have a shoulder, and he didn't have a guy in his corner to help him with anything. Not even to pop it back yeah. in place. So he was in between rounds. He would just go stock back and forth while everyone was sitting down, getting worked on. He would just look at you, walking back and forth. And Pretty intimidating, I'd think. Brendan's got the like brother guilt of like he can't do this. And yeah. now we breezed over it a little bit, but that Athenius or whatever that uh, Athenius, Athenius. I don't know if that's right. The Greek but, mythology guy. Yeah, the Greek mythology wrestler. Tommy is still on this this march, like. It's still in his head. He didn't talk about it at all, but he's still undefeated at this point. Never lost a match. Now he dislocated his shoulder, which means he's either going to forfeit and lose, or he's going to fight and probably lose. So his brother is the one who's fighting him in this moment of like he's. This his is probably going to be. He's telling him first to loss. stop. He's not going to make that heroic challenge of winning fourteen hundred and sixteen games. Or, Matches, matches in yeah, whatever, row. yeah. He's he's telling the ref to call it. He's telling his his boss or not boss, but trainer. And the trainer tells him, dislocate the other one. Like I don't care that you dis. He's not your brother in the ring. Yeah, he goes good. Dislocate the other one. Like make him so he can't throw a punch. And so the next round is Tommy still goes for it, but it's he can't do anything. He can't protect himself. He can barely throw a punch with his other hand because he's trying to kind of protect himself. It's probably about 30 seconds to a minute of his brother saying, what are you doing? Stop this. And then finally he just says, fuck it. And roundhouse kicks him yeah. right to the dome. And I mean, he beat him a little bit before that kick too. Like, yeah. But he he's like, all right, I'm going to take this then. Like if you, I, I can't get through to you, you're not listening. I'm just going to win this fight. Um, puts him in a lock. Tommy taps, which was surprising. I thought Tommy would die before he tapped. Just the, from the what I got from him, I was like, "He's, you can put him in a chokehold, and he's not tapping. You're gonna pass him out before he will actually give up in the fight." But he taps. Uh, very rocky ending where they don't really show anything. They just get up together and walk out of the ring. And Brendan's holding Tommy yeah. as they're kind of walking out, and and it kind of looks close. like that might be the what they needed to get over this, and they might be able to have a relationship because Tommy was allowing it. He wasn't like, get off me, get away from me. He was like letting his brother help him and walk him out of there. So, And the dad did eventually show back up. And so we don't know where that went. A lot of uh, questions left at the end of it, but that seems how a lot of fighting movies end. They're just The tournament ends and it's over. Mm-hmm. Did he get his $5 million? Did he save his house? Did he donate any of it? Who knows? Stay tuned next time for Warrior Oh, no two. one wants to know if he donated any of it. Well, I'm get saying like, like to here. Tommy's friend's uh, family. He's no, like, he's oh, got we'll his give them a couple thousand. It is his newborn uh, had some pretty serious medical bills. Yeah, and that, that is why that. they were so broke. I didn't yep. bring that up. Had a heart condition. Yep. So uh, he had his own family to worry about. Donate to my kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> all in all, it's a pretty solid movie. Really good action. Uh, it's older, 2011, but damn good movie, though. Still holds up. Absolutely. Should we get into the ratings? What'd you guys give oh, it? Well, yeah. <clears throat> you can go. You want to go first? You want to go first? I'll go first. I'm pretty high on it. Uh, I we'll think see that was. Last, then. No. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm high on it too, though. Yeah. Okay. I'm giving it an eight. That's exactly what I was thinking too. Dang. All right, I'll shoot mine out. I'm seven two. 
Seven two. Pretty good. I, I like the sport. Love the action. Did you want to get in a fight afterwards? Oh yeah. Do those these movies do that to you? No. There's one movie that does it to me more than any other movie. Eight Mile. No. Creed. No. Never back down. The dancing movie. <laughs> no. That's, that's a, Step Up. Oh, it's <laughs> same UFC. actor though, right? <laughs> no. You sure he wasn't in the Step Up movies? Step Up is. Uh, Are you Channing sure you're not, you're not thinking Step Up? Yeah, it's a fighting movie. Have you never, never seen back Never Back Down? down? They fought with their dances. No, it was like... The, That's footloose. He's a, like Iowa. It's kind of silly. He's an <laughs> Iowa football player, and he punches someone. It's kind of got the same story as Karate Kid, too. He punches someone on the field, and the video goes viral, and he moves down to Florida, and everyone knows him because that video went viral. And there's Volchuk from the OC. He's like the king of the school and invites him to the party, and... He's like, all right, now you got to fight a real person and beats the shit out of him. And then he goes to a UFC training thing that's Demon Hunsu, and he trains him, and then there's a big tournament at the end. It's pretty much the same movie as Karate Kid in this, but younger people. I feel like Star in four weeks, we're going to be watching Never Back Down. Should I pencil it in? I know. He just we don't, gave you the movie yeah, in review. This is fair. a two for one. We don't, and you just watched it, but you should watch it again. I can't believe you've never seen it. I didn't that know. movie, probably just because of the age I was when it came out. High Every school. time I watch it, I just want to fight someone. And I've never been in a fight, so. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to fight a face that pretty, right? Yeah, you can't hit it. Mm-mm. So you guys I, were all 88872? Oh, eight, eight, he didn't I was, give a score I was 8 yet. as well, actually. 8 Yep. Cowboys. I was. First half was like a 5-6. Second half was like a 9-4. That averages out to 8. 9-4 <laughs> for the second I think, half? Like, I think it's a really good movie. Like seven two yeah, seems solid. Seven I two is a good movie. I yeah, like it. for like the repeated seven, two viewings for the lowest. I've had, and I still was into it like the whole time. I, that, that means the movie's good. That that's an eight for me if I can watch it three four times and every time have my phone sitting on the ground and not. I didn't have my phone the entire time. Yeah, <laughs> didn't go on it once. So two thousand eleven, I was in eleventh grade. We had a wrestler that was undefeated, so it was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Is this movie this week? Who's the pick this upcoming week? You? I got it. Never right, back down. By the down. way, it, it never back down. <laughs> I thought you'd pick Godzilla versus Kong. Well, you thought wrong. No, I didn't pick that. Uh, this did get a 7-8. Seven, 7-8 eight. Seven between, eight yeah, between the four Ooh. of us here, which IMDB, or IMD, as the people know it by, was 8-2. Okay. So The butthole's more Let's accurate. just start calling it undercut accurate. by the butthole. <laughs> uh, my movie is going to be... Starring Matthew Perry. And 17 again. Zach yards. Efron. Yes. I just watched 17 again. Happy to watch it again. I'm just kidding. It's the whole nine yards. You got it right. Did what? I? Yeah. Yep. The whole nine yards. Bruce Willis. Matthew Perry. It's about the, the what's his name? The Tulip. That's Matthew. Or that's uh, Bruce Willis. It's going to be a good one. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I enjoyed it when I watched the series. Which one's that on? It's on Amazon Prime. This series, like the multiple movies, or was there a TV show too? There's two movies. Two movies. The whole ten yards. Yeah, but you got to pay for that one, so we'll just watch the first one. The whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. Amazon Prime. I'm excited. I think I watched it right when it came out, and I have no memory of it whatsoever. When did I it come out? that it exists. Late nineties. Wow. Okay. Was it that long ago? Two thousand. Yep. So I'm yeah, I'm definitely excited to watch it again. So you gotta check it out. All right. Is that the end, then? I, I mean, that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Go jerk off. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, uh, boy. Thank you for listening. Check out our website, <laughs> www.officialbutthole.com. We're on all socials Wait, at still Official here. Butthole. Please well, leave us a I mean, rating and review this on Apple Music, and, music and, and we'll see you next time. I didn't actually hear it at all. Literally I just I don't think I heard that would have been in your recipe. I've never seen it. You would love it, okay? I'm sure I would. After this movie, I signed up for Jiu Jitsu. Long time ago. Yeah. Trailer. Never back down. Always back down. (laughs) Never around. I already like it. Never heard. Always back down. A story of Scott's married life.